with all the talk from the Trump administration saying that the Obama administration wiretapped him during the elections. I started getting curious, and after I looked into it, I found that if I were Obama, I would want to wiretap Trump too. And let's find out why. The whole thing basically revolves around Paul Manafort. You see, Paul Manafort moved into Trump Towers around 2005-2006, mid-2000s. I believe he still lives there today, if I'm not mistaken. So there's one connection to Trump with Paul Manafort. Paul Manafort was also Trump's campaign strategist before Steve Bannon became the chief strategist. In fact, on August 14, 2016, the New York Times reported that Manafort received $12.7 million over five years from the Ukrainian Party of Regions. That's a political party in the Ukraine. August 17, 2016, Trump received his first security briefing. And then, on August 19, 2016, Paul Manafort resigned due to his increasing scrutiny becoming a distraction. So let's check this out, shall we? Well, it turns out that Paul Manafort was working in Ukraine. He began working in Ukraine after the Orange Revolution in the winter of 2004-2005. Mr. Yanukovych, then Prime Minister, was declared the winner of a presidential election in 2004 that was marred by fraud and overturned by the country's highest court after weeks of protests in favor of his pro-Western rival, Viktor Yashchenko. Yanukovych, it seemed, was in need of a new political advisor. Manafort started advising Yanukovych, and over time, his party started winning more and more, and by the 2010 election, Yanukovych had won, and his party had control over parliament. Now, by the time November 22nd, 2013 rolls around, it seemed as though Yanukovych had to make a decision. You see, the Ukraine was supposed to sign an association agreement between Ukraine and the EU in the interest of national security. Turns out that people were against that overwhelmingly, from what this says. So the Crimeans were categorically against the policy of blackmail and unjustified demands to reduce social standards, which in recent months is actively conducted in Ukraine by a group of officials and retired EU officials. When Yanukovych decided not to join with the agreement between Ukraine and the EU national security, that's when another revolution began. And this is where it really starts getting interesting, it was in November of 2013. This is before the protests got really bad and really violent. So let's watch Oleg. Oleg was a member of the Ukrainian parliament. He was actually in the same party, the Party of Regions, with Viktor Yanukovych. Let's listen to what Oleg has to say. Которые предоставили убедительные свидетельства того, что на территории нашего государства при поддержке и при непосредственном участии посольства Соединенных Штатов Америки осуществляется проект Техком, в рамках которого ведется подготовка к разжиганию гражданской войны на Украине. Now, I'm going to have to stop it right there because when Oleg talks about this tech camp project that prepares specialists for information warfare, I would love to show you the proof that I have found that supports his claim. So let's kick it out here. Now, this isn't in particular for the Ukraine, but it's for the Middle East and Africa. And I'll be sure to leave the links below, and actually I have copies of this as well. So it says 
the state is to award social networking grants in the Middle East and Africa. The State Department recently unveiled a pilot program that will award up to $5 million in grants to expand the use of social networking technologies in the Middle East with the goal of increasing citizen engagement and civic participation. And this is from October the 9th, 2009. Now, I know this is off topic, but let's check and see when the Arab Spring begun. Well, in February 16th of 2011, from northern Africa to the Persian Gulf, governments appeared to flounder over just how to outrun mostly peaceful movements spreading erratically like lava, erupting from a volcano with no predictable end. Hmm. Let's find out a little bit more about this program, shall we? In an announcement released on September the 25th, the department said it will award five organizations between 500000 and $2.5 million to expand the availability of social networking and new media capabilities in the Middle East and North Africa. The program is sponsored by the Middle East Partnership Initiative part of the Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs at the State Department. And that's yours and my taxpayers' dollars. Now, that's not all. Let's look at the particular State Department announcement. Ah, here we go. U.S. Department of State Diplomacy in Action. Funding Opportunity Title, New Empowerment Communication Technologies, Opportunities in the Middle East and North Africa, September 2009. On June 4th in Cairo, President Obama called for a broader engagement and a new beginning to relations between the United States and Muslim communities around the world. As part of that commitment, the President outlined expanded U.S. support for online learning, networking, and partnership among a range of stakeholders. In support of the President's vision, the Office of the Partnership Initiative announces an open competition seeking pilot proposals that will leverage innovative new technologies to connect people, particularly youth, in order to expand civic participation, increase new media capabilities for civil society, and enhance online educational opportunities in the Middle East and North Africa. Innovative technologies that enable, encourage, and build social connections, especially those operating on mobile platforms and the Internet, have created new opportunities for promoting democratic practices, civic participation, and learning. These new technologies offer means to effectively engage youth and difficult to reach or previously unengaged populations. NEA seeks implementers to educate, train, organize, and empower audiences through technology such as, but not limited to, social networking, digital video conferencing, interactive online learning, widgets, wiki functions, mobile applications, and blogging. These efforts should promote civic and political participation. This is funded via our taxpayers' dollars. And let's see what it did. И кураторством посла Соединенных Штатов в Украине Джеффри Пайта, пообщавшись с активистами организации Воля, я выяснил, что некоторым из них под видом специалистам по IT-технологиям удалось попасть на мероприятия, которые проходили в техкомпе. Тихо к удивлению, под видом обучения особенностям использования современных медиа. Американские инструкторы рассказывали об использовании социальных сетей и интернет-технологий для целенаправленного влияния на общественное мнение, активизации протестного потенциала с целью организации силовых акций на территории Украины, радикализации борьбы за власть. В качестве примеров американские инструкторы 
проводили примеры использования социальных сетей для организации и управления уличными акциями в Египте, Тунисе, Ливии. Выпускники этих комплексов сейчас активно проводят свои семинары по территории Украины. Всего было проведено пять мероприятий, обучено около 300 человек, которые сегодня работают по всей Украине. Последняя конференция техком состоялась 14-15 ноября в Киеве, прямо на территории посольства Соединенных Штатов Америки. Вы мне скажите, где еще, в какой стране мира неправительственная организация будет работать и проводить свои мероприятия прямо на территории посольства Соединенных Штатов. Это неуважение к государству Украины, к народу Украины. Oleg has more to say as well. I got my hands on some shots of a Lufthansa airplane delivering diplomatic mail for the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine. They show us a car with U.S. diplomatic license plates and heavy-built guys getting out of it. But there wasn't just an embassy car. There was also an armored truck for transporting cash. Part of the documents is loaded into the embassy car, and huge bags go into the armored truck. If there's money in these trucks, what does the U.S. Embassy need it for? Victoria Nuland said that the USA had spent $5 billion on democracy in Ukraine. But we don't know what this money was spent on. On organizing the Orange Revolution? On setting up this revolution? Revolution, on concocting Molotov cocktails, or on some anti-AIDS programs. Maidan needs money. It's a huge enterprise where you have to pay for food, heating, propaganda materials, and so on. Look at the combatants' equipment. They all have bats. They're all wearing uniforms. Now, that was RT, and... My propaganda machine tells me that RT is a propaganda machine. So we'll listen to our propaganda machine and see what they say about what happened in Ukraine. Since Mr. Putin made this decision around Crimea uh, and Ukraine, not because of some grand strategy, but essentially because he was caught uh, off balance by uh, the protests in the Maidan and uh, Yanukovych then fleeing after we had brokered a deal uh, to transition power in Ukraine. Uh, since that time... And let's not forget about that secret conversation between Victoria Newland and the American ambassador to the Ukraine talking about who they are going to put in as the puppet government. And they decided that they would put in Yats. Well, Yats is out due to an overwhelming no confidence vote so i'm sure that paul manafort knows a lot more than what i've just showed you here about what's going on with ukraine because the party that was targeted in ukraine by the so-called protesters is the party that manafort was affiliated with and here you have Ukraine's former ruling party hit by spate of apparent suicides. Four members of Viktor Yanukovych's party of regions have died within weeks as investigations into old regime officials mount up. And look at what happened in 2014 to Oleg when he tried to run for president. Mikhailo Chechtov wrote a note. He said he had no moral strength to live and thank people for their support. Then he stepped out of a window of his 17th floor apartment, leaving his slippers behind for his wife to find later. Chechtov was once a senior member of Ukraine's Party of Regions, which had a strong grip on power until the revolution a year ago. His death on February 28th was the second of a string of apparent suicides by top members of the party, which until last year had dominated Ukrainian politics. For such officials died within several weeks. All of them were under criminal investigation by the incumbent authorities. Now, those incumbent authorities just happened to be the puppet government that Obama and Victoria Nuland 
along with the American ambassador to Ukraine, placed in. The leader of the party of the regions, the former Ukrainian president Viktor Yanukovych, fled the nation at the height of the Maidan revolution, leaving his allies stunned and struggling to accept the new reality. The party started disintegrating rapidly. Many of its members ended up facing trials for corruption, extortion, abuse of office, and even murder. Serhii Valter, the mayor of the southeast end of Ukraine, was found hanged in his home on the 25th of February. Prosecutors asked for 14 years in prison for him. He was extorting from business and was likely to get a guilty verdict. A former MP and top manager of a brewery shot himself in his home in a suburb of Kiev on March the 9th. Just three days later, another person, which was a former governor in the southeast of Ukraine, was also found shot in his home. And it looks as though Yanukovych's younger son also died around that time. He was driving and fell through the ice on a lake in Siberia. Anyway, you get an idea of what's going on there. And with Paul Manafort living in Trump Tower, I'm sure that he's tapped. I'm sure that since he's in kind of the limelight, they want to keep Manafort out of the limelight in case they need to get rid of him, in case he knows something that the rest of these people know. Trump may know something that the rest of these people know. Who, kn who knows? But this is very interesting. And here's something else that's extremely interesting that may have Obama following Trump to see what he knows. And that is, after Trump was elected president, he met with Tulsi Gabbard on November the 21st, 2016. After the meeting, Gabbard vowed to work with Trump. And that was the same day. And then on December 8th, 2016, she introduced legislation to stop arming terrorists. The legislation would prohibit the U.S. government from using American taxpayer dollars to provide funding, weapons, training, and intelligence support to groups like the Levant Front, Fersal al-Ha, and other allies of Jabhat Fatah al-Sham and al-Qaeda and ISIS, or other countries who are providing direct or indirect support to these same groups. The legislation also had bipartisan support. It was then formally introduced in the House on January 23rd, 2017. Now, on January 25th, 2017, all of a sudden, Congressman Tulsi Gabbard returns from Syria with renewed calls to end regime change war in Syria now. Now, here's the connection, in my opinion. It's my belief that with Paul Manafort working so closely with many of the Ukrainians that have been targeted now, and they just happen to be the pro-Russian party. I believe that Russia may have been the go-between in order for Tulsi Gabbard to meet with Bashar al-Assad. Now, incidentally, I would say that Obama has plenty of reason to follow and wiretap Trump. He is scared of what Trump knows and what Trump may tell. Now, also, I want to mention that this man, Barack Hussein Obama, and I have proof of this as well, he killed millions of people across just about every continent. I've got proof. Anyway, I wanted to bring this to your attention in closing. This is translated from an Egyptian paper from August the 21st, 2013. So when Obama was in the midst of planning his attack on Ukraine, Egypt was in the midst of charging Barack Hussein Obama in international court for crimes against humanity and for teaming up with the Muslim Brotherhood. They also mentioned Muslim Brotherhood people in here. And let's look and see what they charge him with. Crime against humanity when committed as part of a widespread systematic attack directed against any civilian population with knowledge of the attack. A. Murder. B. Extermination. C. Slavery. Now that slavery rings a bell with me because it's from Central and South America as well. He did the same thing. That's a whole other ballgame. 
Hopefully I'll have time to make a video on it one of these days. Deportation or forcible transfer of population, imprisonment, or other severe deprivation of physical liberty in violation of fundamental rules of international law, torture, rape, sexual slavery, and forced prostitution, forced pregnancy. See, this is what happens when this man right here is given a Nobel Peace Prize before he even does anything. And, and let's look and see what the man was given a Nobel Peace Prize for. His extraordinary efforts to strengthen international diplomacy and cooperation between peoples. These people are psychopaths. Not only is Obama one, but the people who gave out the award. What in the world were they thinking? I'm thinking they're a bunch of psychopaths. In a nutshell, folks, not only should Barack Hussein Obama be in prison and buried under the prison, but Hillary Clinton should not have even been able to run for president. She should be in a jail cell right next to him. So Obama has lots of reasons to tap Trump because he's murdered people on just about every continent. And really, Trump's about the only one who can do anything about it. I personally don't think anything's going to get done, but you never know. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off, and as always, I've got your six.